Hey everybody, Jake here. Uh, good morning, or good afternoon, depending on when I get this uploaded. Um, you know, there's been another podcast style thing on the channel. I'm not really sure what to call it. Um, this Week in Ink. That was talking exclusively about ink and fountain pens and things like that. And um, has a co-host, uh, my friend Josh. That may come back. It really depends. It's just hard to, for, for uh, our schedules to align and for us to have, you know, an hour, two hours to talk about stuff like that. Um, and those weren't super popular for the channel, but some people did listen to them. Um, so I figured I would bring back something a little bit similar. But in the spirit of the channel, talk about stuff that is a bit more varied than just the, uh, the pens and the ink. So, just to get started off here, um, when I do these, I'm probably going to talk about stuff that I'm going to be reviewing before I review it. So, mainly uh, newer acquisitions or things that I've had for a while that are upcoming. And there's a handful of those things. I'm just going to kind of rattle them off um, off the top of my head. There's a Super 5 Rollerball that uses fountain pen ink um, that's coming up. Uh, Retro 51, I have uh, one of their ball points and rollerball pens. Uh, that'll be coming up at some point. Um, I picked up a Lamy Dialogue 3 recently, and I'll talk about it a bit more. So you, you can get kind of a, a pre-review, like a preview. That was lame, I'm sorry. Um, there's some from... Gosh, what is that brand name? It's an Indian company that makes fountain pens. Fountain Pen Revolution, maybe? FPR? I think that might be them. Um, now, as, as far as uh, watches coming up for review, those, those take me a while longer. Um, they're generally a bit more uh, expensive and individualized because of sizing and things like that. I do have a Mondang Classic Automatic Day Date review coming up. And the watch reviews really don't get many views. So I don't really, you know, it doesn't bother me. Um, more of just a comment. The, the unboxings, for some reason, do fine. Um, so <laughs> since you guys like that, I may end up doing some more of those um, for upcoming products. I don't do it for everything, but I do it for a few things for now. So I may make that a bit more of a regular feature. But yeah, the Mondane, I recently found out that I got a really good deal on it. Um, I believe they retail for somewhere between seven and $800 typically. However, right around Christmas, my wife was looking for a gift for me. And we found the Mondane Classic Day Date for $200 um, from a seller on eBay. Um, at that same time, they were about that same price on uh, a couple of other sites. Um, including Amazon, as well as a few other uh, re online retailers. I believe they were all gray market. I don't believe um, any of the the main retailers from Mondane had it on sale. The watch is a little difficult to find, honestly. It's not as prevalent as I would imagine, because when I think of Mondane, that's the watch I think of. But, you know, um, so that, that'll be coming up. Now, as far as knives, there's a ton of stuff. Um, I actually have several videos uh, filmed right now that just need to be uploaded. Uh, this will get put out before those, just because this is going to be much quicker and easier on me. Um, uh, there's a review um, coming up of multiple knives. I'll just touch on the ones that I don't have videos for already. Uh, Booze Blade Smoke, probably my favorite knife that I haven't reviewed yet. Um, that I've had for a while. Uh, Millet Torrent, I need to do that one, I know. I keep forgetting about it. Um, just picked up my first Boker Kalash. Is that? Yeah. Yeah, Kalashnikov. Uh, they had an electric blue version on Blade HQ, so it's it's a black handle with a uh, electric blue painted, I guess, a blade hardware and clip. It's It's pretty good. Um, I was not a fan of the Kershaw Launch 4, which, if you saw my review, 
You know that already. That knife has been sold. Um, so this is this is not the replacement for it. The replacement for that knife was really the um, Microtech UTX-70 because the blade shape's a bit more similar and things like that. But this knife is very, very good. Um, I was really surprised. Only thing I don't like is the clip looks absolutely idiotic in my opinion. That wavy design reminds me of like a Flamberg sword. It's weird. Um, but yeah, that's, that'll be coming up. The Buck Marksman, I picked that up. I like that knife a lot more than I thought I would. I've hated, hated, hated the Buck Vantage that I've had for a while. Uh, the Marksman is much, much better. Uh, the version I picked up, if you haven't seen the unboxing, and also the Boker Kalashnikov, uh, it's in the unboxing as well for this, which was the second to last video I did. Um, but this Buck Marksman is the orange G10 version from SK Blades. They do like limited edition runs of buck knives uh, with different materials so orange g10 on this one with an s35 vn hollow ground blade i really like it so far uh, there are a few issues with it but for the most part it's it's amazing what else do we have coming up uh the crkt uh large large pilar whatever it is that one um I didn't like the Pilar. I, I don't remember my review for it. I may have been a bit more forgiving at the time. Um, however, I have since passed that on uh, to my younger brother. I didn't use it. I I disliked it kind of uh, quite a bit. It just wasn't for me. Uh, so I picked up the Pilar. I really like it so far. It's not my favorite. It's not even my favorite budget CRKT. Um, I'll still take the Ruger LCK any day. But I did pick up a P-Large. Um, it is semi-customized, but it doesn't really affect the performance at all, and I won't let that impact my review. Um, but I'll, I'll talk about all that in the main review as well, just to give you a heads up on that. Is there anything else that I've gotten? I've sold off a large chunk of stuff, honestly, uh, to fund picking up some other things. And I'll talk about that a little bit later. Um, but, but yeah, I sold... Oh gosh. Probably between like a thousand and twelve hundred dollars worth of stuff uh, to pick up some other things. the The main thing that I wanted to pick up was I, I've been using my phone to film these reviews. Um, if you look back at some of the uh, earlier uh, videos, they're shot on either a phone or a Nikon D thirty two hundred, which does not have great video quality. Uh, a lot of noise in those videos, but the phone isn't really ideal, it kind of, it doesn't necessarily give me the image quality that I want, so I went ahead and picked up a, uh, a Panasonic Lumix GX85, really, really, really pleased with the video quality so far, and there was a, a, a kind of a contest that Nick Shabazz hosted for smaller channels, which I entered, uh, about 50 channels entered. And we were kind of rated, you know, by you guys, by viewers. Um, so it was nice to get some some feedback from people who don't necessarily watch the channel, and some people that do watch the channel. Uh, I think the the categories I scored highest in were audio and video quality, which uh, to me makes makes a bit of sense. Um, overall YouTube quality, I think I'm about in the middle, because you know there's some people out there with amazing mic setups and they're using you know, red cameras, but as far as EDC stuff, uh, fountain pens, you know, knives especially, not to bash any, any of you knife YouTubers out there, um, I think my quality is pretty far above average. A lot of knife reviewers have kind of meh setups, and video quality and mainly audio quality are things that really matter a lot to me for a YouTube channel. Probably the second most important thing after personality <laughs> content's probably tertiary on that one, but um, I, I really wanted to make sure that my video and audio audio quality were really really good, and the the pen reviewer that had in my opinion the the best video quality by far, um, which was the the pen habit, Matt Armstrong, you know he's he's out of the game now, uh, and I completely understand his decision after doing this for a while. Um, I don't see myself quitting, but I've been tempted quite a lot. 
Um, it's just a lot of work and the, the feedback's not always necessarily super, uh, super kind. But, you know, um, my video quality still nowhere near his. His his videos were, which he also took much longer to do, like to work on everything than I do. I take probably between an hour and two hours to, uh, you know, write up a script, film the video, and edit it. And um, I think he took several hours per video. And our, our video links are pretty similar. Um, that's one of the areas I scored lowest in was the video length and I understand that you know most of my videos are over 10 minutes over 15 minutes even it's the reason is when you when I'm telling you that this pen is worth you know $300 I want you to really really know why I think that if you're spending $300 I want to walk you through everything on this pen everything that I can notice um, when when I go to buy pens I know enough now by myself to to not really need a review. I may look up a review uh, just on the nib or something like that. Or if I can get it in hand, it, you know, that's even better. But if you're spending $200 on something, or if you're spending $50 on something, watch reviews of it. That's why I made this, was just to help people decide whether or not this stuff was worth their money. You know, because that was a big thing to me, especially when I was younger. I didn't have a lot of money. I still have a lot of money. But, um, you know, looking at those reviews to make sure I'm not wasting my money, that's a big thing. So, yeah, if, you, if you're buying something, you know, watch my videos. That would be great. Um, but also watch a lot of other people's videos, as many as you can possibly find and tolerate, you know, watching. Um because the more you know, the the better equipped you're going to be to take a look at it. And factor these people's biases into this stuff. You know, if you watch my channel regularly and I'm reviewing an extra fine nib, you know I don't normally like those. I'm probably not going to like that nib. It's probably not going to be in the, in the light section. That's just me. Um, you know, I'm not a huge fan of... G10 on knives doesn't bother me, but it's not something that I, I love. Um, blade steel really doesn't bother me all that much. I, I just don't I don't use them uh, enough to let it bother me. Except in some cases, there's there's one knife I'll touch on later that, eh. But you know, little stuff like that, I'm biased. Everyone's biased, and even though I I try not to let that impact my reviews. Um, it does, just because this is, all of this is my opinion on all of these things. So it's, it, you know, the bias is going to get in there. And that's going to happen with every reviewer, which is why I highly encourage that you check out as many reviews as you can when you're spending this kind of money or more, you know. Even if you're spending $20, if you're looking at that CRKT Ruger LCK, watch a ton of reviews. They're probably all going to be really good because that knife is amazing for the price. But watch them you know, before you go and spend your money. Also, uh, this 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 video is not going to get published. It's going to get deleted. But I filmed like a 30-minute video talking about some of this stuff and also kind of talking about getting burnt out on YouTube because that's what's been happening to me lately. And it's happened a few times in the past. I'll kind of sit there and wonder what I'm getting out of it. And lately it hasn't been much. Um, the, the numbers have been down. They, that doesn't really bother me, but the interaction has been lower and that does. Uh, what I mean is the last few videos I've, I've published have gotten, you know, 50 ish views, which when considering I have like 1400 subscribers, that's a little low. Um, and again, that the number part really doesn't bother me all that much it used to I used to be a bit more concerned about it but the comments have kind of slowed down as well and that's generally what I what I enjoy the most is uh, you know interacting with everyone but it's just you know you're you're putting in all this work into this stuff and it might not seem like a lot but uh, okay right, right now I, I'm reviewing a, a cheaper fountain pen I'm carrying by a company called Uli, 
which is weird. I picked it up at Books A Million. <laughs> if you can believe they still have those around. And it doesn't sound like a lot, but I have to use that pen. If I'm going to review it, I have to use it instead of using my Lamy 2000 or my Pelican M805 or, you know, my Twisby pens. I, I have to use that one instead so I can get a good, good grasp of, of everything on it. And I don't hate that pen, but it's just kind of okay. You know, I have pens that I love, love, love using, but that one's just okay. Uh, some stuff I really, really enjoy carrying. Um, one thing I've been carrying the most lately, and I forgot to touch on this in uh, recent acquisitions, believe it or not, I picked up a Medford. Now, it is one of their smaller knives. It's the Dress Marauder, but I really like that knife a lot, like a lot, a lot. Uh, so that's been fun to carry, but some of the stuff is it's it's a chore, you know. And then I sit down and write write a script down and and see if all of my opinions on that thing are justified. And then I got to film it, and then I got to edit it, and then I upload it, and it's you know it's a bit of a process. And seeing so little community interaction after I put all this time into this stuff, it's just a little disappointing. You know, I've, I've put out well over 200 videos uh, since I've been doing this channel. And for, you know, for some channels, that's nothing. But in general, that, that's a lot. That is a lot of videos. Um, I've, I've put well over 500 hours into this channel for sure. Just, you know, replying to comments and making videos, things like that. That's a lot of time. Um, I've been doing this for uh, coming up on two years now. That's crazy. But yeah, coming up on two years now, and that's 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 a lot of time, you know. And I think about the channel a lot more than I probably should. It's on my mind every day. It's become so ingrained in my life, and I, it's not that big of a part of my life realistically to where I should be thinking about it that much. You know, I'm, I'm always looking at stuff through the, the lens of being a YouTuber, um, but I'm not really, you know, I'm not, well, nowadays they're not even called YouTubers, they're called influencers, and I'm definitely not one of those, but, you know, it, like, for example, if we're in a store and... I'm looking for fountain pens, and I see a fountain pen that I really don't have all that much interest in, but I've been seeing it around on Reddit and, you know, fountain pen forums and things like that, and it's $15, or or, or even better example, this little Uli pen right here that I picked up at Books Million, I have no interest in this pen, but I bought it for the channel, you know, um, I like to think I do a wide a wide variety of price ranges when I do reviews. And, you know, some my affordable pen reviews are probably some of my most popular. And I buy those exclusively for the channel. I do use rather affordable pens on a regular basis. Still, but nothing under like $10, you know, generally. Just because there's better better quality out there. It's not like an elitist thing. I just, I already own stuff that is better than this Uli pen. But I wouldn't hate using this every day. It's just not amazing. So, you know, stuff like that I, I do exclusively for the channel. And I'm not, I don't have a big enough channel to, to be doing that. You know, uh, even the $5. So, I don't think you're supposed to talk about how much money you've made off of YouTube, like AdSense or whatever it is. Um, but I don't think YouTube's going to listen to this. I don't think it matters. Um, I've made a little over $100, and I do mean a little over $100 um, since I passed 1,000 subs and uh, turned on ads. And that may sound like a lot, but it's literally been like six months or seven months, something like that. Um and when you consider that since I started this channel, I've, 
you know, it's it's for sure been offset a little bit by some of the stuff I've sold back, but I've spent thousands of dollars on, uh, you know, pins and watches and knives, mainly pins, <laughs> definitely mainly pins and ink. Um, so that, that's something. Um, I know it's, it, it doesn't really impact y'all. And I, I completely understand that. You have no reason to care about, uh, you know, the channel finances. But I do enjoy uh, picking up stuff for review for you guys. But I, I find myself doing it a lot less lately. Just because I can't, I can't afford to keep doing that. You know, and buy stuff that I know I'm going to enjoy. Because at the end of the day, you know, I, I, I am reviewing stuff for you. I'm giving my opinions on things that I hope everyone will will really, really like. Or, you know, tell you that it's bad and you'll avoid it. But at the end of the day, I'm still an enthusiast. You know, I love using fountain pens. I use them daily. I love carrying knives. I carry them daily. I wear watches daily. And I, I hate to say this, but the, at the end of the day, it matters more to me that I'm carrying something that I enjoy instead of reviewing something that's popular. You know, I, I don't regret buying the you know, Pilot Metropolitan. It was a good pen, but I mainly bought it for the channel. But I really, really enjoyed, you know, buying the Twisby Go for about the same price. It's just a better pen. So I find myself buying stuff strictly for the channel or for the purpose of explicitly just reviewing it and then putting it away a lot less. Now, I, if you notice in my videos, I've been pushing this a, a bit more just because of this, because I don't feel like spending any more you know, out of pocket on the stuff that I'm not even going to use. So I've been putting links to, uh, you know, my Patreon page and stuff like that. And when I do live streams, you know, I think you guys could do super chat messages. Anything that you could do to contribute to the finances of the channel would be much appreciated. I completely understand if you don't want to, though. Um, it's just not... It feels weird. It almost, it almost doesn't feel like I'm asking for money, but I, I mean, I kind of am. But it's not money that I want for me. Um, it's, it's literally just to, to help offset the stuff that would be bought explicitly for the channel. You know, if I, if I get like a thousand dollars a month, you're, you're darn straight. I'm gonna buy some stuff that I'm actually gonna keep and use. But for the most part, you know. It would be to offset the cost of that. Or, you know, I would love to do more giveaways if I could. Because I, I have stuff right now that I do not use. But I just don't feel like paying the, the $5 to ship out 15 pins. That's that's like 60 bucks. Did I do that math right? No, I did not. Oh, my God. <laughs> that's like $75. Apologize for that. That's that's a lot of money out of pocket, and you know the the thousand subscriber giveaway that was that was all out of pocket for me too. Um, I think I had a discount code for Lemur Inc, but it still came out to like eighty dollars or something like that. Um, include that's excluding the stuff that I already had to to give away, but I enjoy doing stuff like that. Um, that will be the last international giveaway that I do. That's for sure, though. Um, that was a, an absolute nightmare on my end. But I'm really, really glad that everyone got their stuff and that they enjoyed it. That that just really makes me feel good. Um, but yeah, the Patreon page is up. It's it's per month. It's not per video. You know, I'm not gonna not gonna charge you a ridiculous amount. Um, I need to update these these tiers. But let's see what I have here. So for a dollar a month, um, I, I have created a Discord that you can join. The only person that's part of that Discord right now, because no one has done the Patreon, is me. Um, so you would literally be having like a one-on-one -on -one conversation with me at the moment. 
<laughs> which sounds boring as hell, and I apologize for that. Um, there's a there, there's a two dollar tier, um, basically where I would create polls on what to review next, and you know you could vote in that. And again, that's what this money would be used for is to buy stuff for the channel. So if you guys wanted me to review, um, a pilot justice, which no one knows about, you know, sure if I'm making enough money from this or like a staple knife, like the PM two or the, or the pair of three lightweight, which I would actually wouldn't mind buying. I'm just not completely sold on it. You know, you could vote for that. There's, um, a $10 tier, which is where you get, you know, both of the first tiers. And then you also get to explicitly pick an ink for me to review and I'll do two a year just for you, just for what you've picked. And the the top tier is fifty dollars or more a month. Um, so you get everything from the previous tiers. So you get the inks. You get to vote for what I review. Blah 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 blah. But you'll also get um, I, I'll, I'll purchase something for you. So it's kind of like a subscription box. Um, so twice a year, I will basically send you. Um, uh, let's call it a care package <laughs> with with some stuff that I've really enjoyed. So, for example, um, you know, fifty dollars a year or fifty dollars a month. Sorry, not a year. Um, and so twice a year, I'll send you a bunch of stuff. So let's say, you know, you're like Jake. You know, I really like fountain pens. I really like knives. I really like ink. Um, at the moment, I would probably pur purchase you a, uh, a CRKT Ruger LCK because it's great. Uh, a Buck Marksman. Um, probably uh, a Twisby. A really, really good Twisby. Probably the ALR. It's my favorite. And, you know, a couple bottles of Roshizuku. Twice a year, you get a box for me that has all that stuff in it. Um, but that would be based strictly off of your preferences, so you can you can totally decide what to do. Um, there's some stretch goals as well. Um, you know, if I make fifty dollars a month, I'm pick up some better lighting. My lighting situation's not quite where I want it, so that's you know, uh, it's it's a small thing. I don't know if you guys notice it or not, but I would like to eliminate some of the shadows in the video and just brighten things up a little bit more. Um, at two hundred dollars a month, I would just be reviewing stuff more often because I could afford to pick up stuff again for the channel. Um. A thousand dollars a month. It would mostly be at this. It was originally for a, a better camera. At this point, it mostly be for lenses, uh, for that camera. So uh, you know, it could macro for close-ups and stuff like that. And then, it, if you guys start, you know, really super supporting me and I'm making three grand a month, I'm going to quit my job and put out like eight videos a day. No, not not that many, but there the uh, the increase of videos would be crazy. Um, I don't see that one being met. Realistically, I don't even see the fifty dollar a month being met. But even a dollar a month, you know, could could offset the shipping for and allow me to do more giveaways. Which is the biggest thing for me right now is is that because I have a lot of stuff that I just don't use, and mostly I find myself giving it away to friends and family. But a lot of my friends and family don't care about fountain pens or knives or whatever else. So I'd rather give it to people that enjoy it. But I just can't afford to keep paying shipping on you know 15 packages it's just way too much but yeah that, there's that if you want to contribute to the financial well-being of of your number one reviewer and the last thing i wanted to touch on was i mentioned earlier that i really don't care about numbers and i don't you know views don't matter a lot to me and i don't understand the viewing habits of you guys. If you like to leave feedback for me in comments, which I ask for all the time and no one leaves me, leave it, please. I would love to know this stuff just to get some insight. But like my, my highest viewed video is the Iroshizuku Asagao review, which is, I don't know if you guys just like tragedy or what. That's where my my pilot vanishing point nib died. But I, I don't understand why it's so popular. It makes no sense to me. Um... It's, it's a very middling review. I'm basically saying, you know, this ink's decent, but it's it's not great. 
<laughs> but it has like 15,000 views or something like that. It's crazy. It doesn't make any sense to me. But um, I, I do want to thank you all for, for helping me pass that 1,000 subscriber mark. From now forward, it's kind of inconsequential to me until I hit, what is it, 100,000 subs. And the only reason is I want one of those fancy YouTuber plaques. Um, because until I get one of those, I really can't call myself a YouTuber. I really need one of those plaques to put up above my, my uh, desk here because I'm now working from home. So if I could get one of those just for display, or if you know another, gosh, I don't know, 999,000 of you want to subscribe, I can get that gold one, the gold plaque, the gold play button, and really, really, really look fancy. But in all seriousness, thank, thank you everyone for subscribing. It, you know, it doesn't do much for me, but it does make me feel a little better. And some days I'm just... I'm really not feeling it. Um, you know, you just get depressed. You get burnt out. You don't want to do anything. Well, I don't want to do anything most days. So I kind of got to drag myself out of bed and be like, okay, I'm going to do a review today. Um, so thank you for that. It it just makes me feel like this work I'm being put in is helping someone, which is uh, the biggest reason I created this channel was just to, well, there's two reasons. One is I wanted to talk about knives and pens because no one else around me cares about them and I really really wanted to have someone to talk to about them so that's what that's what you guys are here for that's all like comments and the other reason is just to inform purchasers you know that's a that's a big thing for me I don't want you wasting your money if I can give you uh, you know my opinion on something if it helps your purchase at all I would I'd be more than happy to do so you know that's that's a huge thing for me that matters a lot to me so you know if I can contribute in any way yeah, that just makes my day a little bit better. All right, um, we've got a few uh, topics. I'm gonna kind of break this down. The first, you know, bit of the bit of the auditory experience. It's gonna be about the channel. So this first half hour has been about the channel. I'll try to leave some timestamps down. We'll see how lazy I am. Uh, next up, we're gonna talk about pens. We'll go into knives, watches, the miscellaneous stuff, um, which is, you know, life stuff. If you care about my personal life at all, and some video games I've been playing lately. So let's go ahead and get into pens. Um, so first up, I mentioned that I have recently bought the Lamy Dialogue 3. And I want to talk about that a little bit after I get a sip of water. It's, um, I, I've wanted one for a while. You know, when I went to the Atlanta Pen Show, I was this close, you can't see anything, but I was this close to purchasing one. However... The person that I was going to purchase it from, um, they didn't want me to ink it up unless I was sure I was going to buy it, which makes n no sense to me at all. No sense. Um, if I'm spending $300 plus on a pen, I'm going to ink it up, and I'm not going to promise you I'm going to buy it because that's you know that's $300. I, I want to know how it writes before I you know, give you my money. So instead of doing that, I went over to Drum Ghoul's table and I bought, you know, my uh, Sailor 1911 Large Royal Tangerine. Uh, Drum Ghoul's, by the way, really, really cool guys. They're very, very kind. They let me try out fountain pens that they know I wouldn't buy. Just, just because. Um, they let me try out the, uh, oh gosh, what is it called? The Arco pen that, it's right on the tip of my tongue. Anyway, it's like a $1,200 pen. I really, really wanted it. I didn't have the money for it. I asked my wife if I could buy it. She told me no. Um, the guy was like, you're, you're going to try it anyway. So I, you know, they were really, really kind. I bought uh, both of my large purchases there were from them. Both the uh, Pelican M805 and the uh, Sailor 1911 Large Royal Tangerine. I also bought some other stuff from them. But they're really, really nice guys. If you're at a pin show, definitely check out their table. But anyway, the, back to the Lamy Dialogue 3. Um, so, so yeah, this this guy just wouldn't let me try it out. So, and I wasn't going to spend $300 without getting to try out a pen, especially from some random douchebag who, you know, was just... He, he just wasn't very nice either, just in general. He was very uh, dismissive. And I think it's because of my age... Um, I don't know how, how many of you know, I'm, I'm 24, so I'm pretty young, um, 
and I can understand some hesitancy for letting someone my age uh, try out, you know, a very expensive pen. But if I'm asking about it and I'm knowledgeable about it, you know, I've done my research beforehand on these pens. I'm not an idiot. And, you know, I've used gold nib pens before. I have, at this point, you know, thousands of dollars worth of pens have passed through my hands. I, I know fountain pens fairly well, I like to think. Not not to like a, you know, by any means an expert level, but I know enough about them to not screw up your $300 pen. So the hesitancy and the kind of dismissiveness there was a little irritating. Um, again, likely just due to my age. So that... that really pissed me off and struck me the wrong way, so I didn't buy anything from him. But um, recently, the the pen came up on Mass Drop. And I've had some mis- mixed experiences with Mass Drop, but I'll, I'll touch on those a little bit later as well because there's something else I want to talk about regarding them. But it was like 220 about $100 off of the pen. And I had originally planned to purchase one in Germany anyway when we go in October. But looking at the prices in Germany, they weren't that much cheaper than in America. This was still about $50, $60 less than in Germany. At least what I could find online. I don't know about in-store. So, you know, I just sold off all this stuff. I, I had money to, to spend explicitly for, you know, pens. So I went ahead and I purchased it. Got it in. Cool presentation box. Um, the nib is excellent. It is an excellent, excellent nib. However, the twist mechanism is very rattly, very finicky. And I don't think I would have noticed if I had messed with it. You know, when I started in fountain pens, I probably just thought it was really cool. But since I've been playing with knives, which is about all I do with them, I've really come to appreciate the tolerances that go into them. You know, fit and finish are, are a massive thing to me. You know that if you've watched my reviews. So when you get a knife in, one of the biggest things to check for, at least for me, um, are any gaps, you know, any looseness, any flaws, any blade play, any any hint of wiggle in the lockup or anything like that. Detent rock. Anything that might indicate that this knife was not engineered and executed perfectly. So sitting here with this you know, again, retail, over $300 pen, and having it have that wiggle and that play, it's just not great. That pen is often compared to the the Pilot Vanishing Point. I think it's a much more accurate comparison to the Pilot Fermo, which is uh, instead of a click to, um, you know, get the nib out it's a, a twist to get the nib out same as the Lamy Dialog 3 um, but those pens are half the price and they're better made not not necessarily the Fermo I haven't messed with that one at all but the Vanishing Point is a much higher quality pen than the Dialog 3 um, I have both in a matte black finish uh, both of them look very nice but when you start executing the mechanism of the Lamy Dialog 3, it really shows its flaws. I, You know, I've wanted that pen for a really long time. I don't know if I'm going to keep it, to be honest. Um, it's just not what I thought it would be. And the, the control, the fit and finish, things like that, just aren't, aren't up to the level that I would expect of such an expensive pen. Because at that level... You know, for sure you're paying for the gold nib, but you can get a Lamy 2000 for, you know, half that price. What you're paying for is that mechanism. And when the mechanism itself isn't that good, you know, it's it's a little disappointing. I will say it feels more durable than the Vanishing Point. It's a, a lot bulkier of a pen. It's very large, um, very tanky feeling. But again, the mechanism just feels janky it's it's not very well done from like a mechanical perspective just a little depressing um but but the pen's decent 
And speaking of Europe, um, I you know we're going there in October, and I should have enough saved up by that point to pick up a few fountain pens. The the biggest one I'm looking at is the Conrad Antwerp pen. I've been wanting one of those for a while. They're really really gorgeous. They use a material called Juma, which they've used in some custom fountain pens. It's used a decent amount in actually knife handles. It's a cool almost like reptilian scale looking material. But there's red Juma in those, and they look gorgeous. There's another one that I've been looking at, and I still don't know if I can afford it, but we'll I'll, I'll take a look and we'll see. It's the Kona Gentleman's Pen, um, which is a little sexist, to be honest, but it's really, really cool looking. Um, it is quite expensive. Let me check the price on it real quick. I believe it's like $1,300 or something absolutely insane. You know, right around that that price. Let's see. It is gorgeous, though. Uh, it has a few things that I really like. It has a matte black finish, which I love. And then it has like a honeycomb pattern, which is just... It's my weakness. I, I don't know why. It just is. It's, it's really, really, really nice. Um, So, yeah, it's... Oh gosh, okay. <laughs> it's $1,300 without a nib. So let's see how much it is with a, a 14 karat um, broad nib. Hmm. It looks like that would bring it up. It, it's going to cost like $1,600. Yeah, that's not going to happen. I thought it. I might be able to swing it if I really tried, but no, that's that's not going to get bought. Um, it is a really really gorgeous pen though. Uh, again, you get that matte black, you get a honeycomb. It has gold accents. It's it's really really classy looking pen with a bit of flair, which is, you know, right up my alley. But the uh, the Antwerp pen will probably be bought. Um, I'm looking trying one of their titanium nibs. I've heard good stuff about them, and I really like the titanium nibs that I've tried so far. But if they have some in stock, you know, I'll link them up and, and see what's best. If it, you know, titanium, steel, gold, whatever I get end up getting. But I'm looking forward to that. Um, I'm also considering picking up a few Pelicans, the M600 Violet, which I've, I've wanted for a while. I'm just I'm trying to hold off until Germany on that one. And the Stone Garden, if they have any in stock at a good price, I'll pick it up. I love love the way that pen looks. If you watched my um. This week in ink, I have no idea which number it was. You have to go back and look. Um, I talked to Josh about it. It's it's a gorgeous, gorgeous pen. Absolutely fantastic looking pen. And uh, if they have one there, uh, again, I may pick it up. I found it recently on Endless Pens, which if you have not checked out that site, go look at it. It's it's They have really, really good prices on pens. Like I, I have no idea how they get these prices on them, but they're they're pretty low. They're not a sponsor. I, I wish they'd sponsor me. Send me money in those pens. No, but um, they have really good prices on the pens. So the the violet on there, I think, is like three fifty or something like that. But the Stone Garden is only three seventy five. That is an amazing price for an for a, a Pelican M eight hundred five, especially limited edition like that. So I I oh gosh, I just saw it this morning. I don't have the money for it right now, but I, I was kind of tempted. I was like, eh, maybe, but uh, you know, luckily I can't afford it at the moment. But I, I may pick up and try out one of those as well. Um, next up, the the Twisby Aurora. So this this video got less views than I thought it would. Normally Twisbees are you know big hits for me, but I I kind of understand why. I don't think a lot of people knew about the Twisby Aurora. And what it was, was it was a very small batch, limited edition fountain pen from Twisby. Um, very unlike their normal stuff. Go check out my review of it if you if you haven't. Even if you don't like my reviews, just go look at the pen. It's it's really cool. But it, it, it was a very middling pen for me. So when I found out that, you know, these pens were going for like double what I had paid for them... I'm not really, I don't like scalping. I'm just going to say that. If if something is bought for the explicit purpose of reselling it for a higher price, that really pisses me off. However, if 
if there's something that you're that you have that you find out is worth more than more than what you paid and you're looking to sell it anyway just you know, and people are willing to pay the price just just do it you know i've i've bought stuff at higher than retail before the baron fix specter i paid like 80 dollars for a 60 dollar pen um you know it's it wasn't outrageous i really wanted the pen that matter um, anyway, some of these Twisby Auroras have been going for like literally like two hundred and fifty dollars on eBay. This is a hundred dollar pen, mind you. So, you know, I didn't want to <laughs> didn't want to charge quite that much. Um, so I kind of did some research. I ended up selling it for about two, which is still just insane to me that that someone would pay that much for that pen. But you know, they did. Um, if you're a Twisby collector, it could be a, a huge deal for you far too late now to get your hands on one. I think it was sold out in the first day. But, you know, it's it was something. So yeah, I, I've passed on that pen. I went ahead and sold it on and ended up basically using it to fund the, the Lamy Dialogue 3, which is another middling pen. Uh, I don't know. I like the Dialogue 3 a lot more than I like the Twisby. It's, I'm still just not sure if it's worth the price. Another thing that Twisby did, they... They do have a tendency to show things before they're ready for production or things that never even come to production. So one of those things that I saw on their Instagram stories, so it's it's you know long gone now. I mean you may be able to find some sort of archive footage of it. I'm sure somebody recorded it. I wish I'd taken a screenshot or something. But they had a uh, a pen with a wooden cap. Now all it showed was the cap, so I don't know if the body was wood as well, but that's that's really interesting. You don't see many all wood pens. Um, you do see kit pens, and occasionally you'll get a custom pen with some wood on it, like uh, from Ryan Crusack or something like that. But I think if Twisby released something like that, it, it would be a, a pretty big hit. I just hope they release it in large enough numbers. Uh, if they do put one out, I'll be buying one for sure. But I just thought I'd mention that. Um, so if, if you're interested at all, you can keep an eye out for that. Next thing up is is Pelican. I so I already talked about the Stone Garden. I talked about the M six hundred Violet. And one thing that's coming up, if you haven't already, I don't know if you can still sign up, and I apologize for saying this if you can't. But there is uh, this thing called Pelican Hub coming up in September. I will be going, um, barring any like weird situations. Um, I will be going to the one in Charlotte, North Carolina. So if you're going to that one, please, please leave a comment below. I'd love to meet up with some of you. Um, I, I don't love social interaction a lot, but if you're into fountain pens, I'm, I'm sure we'd get along just fine. But yeah, um, so I'll be going to the one in Charlotte. It, it, there should be one somewhere around you. Um, there's tons of them, and it's not just in America. It's all over the world. They have them in tons of cities. So definitely check that out if you're interested at all in Pelican pens or just fountain pens. You know, it's not a requirement to have a Pelican to go. Um, really, I, I feel, I'm going to be honest with you, though, I feel weird only owning one Pelican and going. But I really like that Pelican. I really like a lot of the things the brand has done. Don't love their prices. But, you know, it's just a chance for me to go and chat with other fountain pen people. Um, so I'm looking forward to that. That's about it on uh, the fountain pen front. So let's go ahead and move on to knives. So, let me get a sip of water real quick. One thing that happened <clears throat> semi-recently is um, there's this shop that I've been wanting to visit for a while in York, South Carolina called Hellacious Blades. There, there are knife shops around me. However, most of them actually carry not lower-end stuff, but pretty much strictly production items and uh, mid to lower end production. So, you know, CRKT, Kershaw, Benchmade, Spyderco, things like that, Microtech. Um, however, Hellacious Blades, which is not not a super long way away, but it's, it's, it's a decent trip. Um, Hellacious Blades in New York, South Carolina has higher end production stuff. Um, for example, you know, Koenig, Chris Reeve, things like that. They also have customs. You know, they have, they have quite a few uh, really nice custom knives. So I wanted to visit there really, really bad. 
And whenever I go into a, a knife or a pen shop for that matter, I, I get a little nervous just because, again, I'm very young. I, I've been discriminated against before for my age when it comes to handling this stuff. But they were very welcoming. Um, there was it was a lady I spoke to there, and I, her name's escaping me at the moment, but she was very kind. Let me try out a ton of knives. Again, knowing I was only going to make one purchase in there, or, or maybe not even purchase anything at all, but she just, she really wanted to have, let me try out all these knives. Um, I missed Blade Show, and I'll talk in a, in a minute about uh, some, some stuff from that. I didn't get to go to Blade Show, though. Um, I'm still not sure if I really want to go. It's just a massive, huge thing, and I, I have a, a bit of social anxiety sometimes. But um, I had Miss Blade Show, so she wanted me to you know check out all this stuff. So I'm just going to go through some of the some of the brands that I that I handled and uh, what I thought about them. Uh, first up was Southern Grind. Um, I've looked at their Spider Monkey multiple times, you know. Um, so handling one in person, um, I had a few thoughts on it. The the biggest one was the the size. Um, the spider monkey is really small. At least to me, it seemed that way. It was a, a very tiny knife. It's very very strange. Um, the one thing that bothered me though is these knives are fairly expensive. Um, there you. Let, let me look at the exact price just real quick for you. So it looks like, yeah. So the the Spider Monkey, they now they come in a, a variety of finishes, like uh, like a ton of them. Um, but it looks like they're they're a little over two hundred dollars, and you can get them um, much much higher price than that. But uh, about two hundred dollars is is what you're going to be looking at. You can get them in carbon fiber, G10, copper, um, all the way up to. I think the most expensive one I looked at was uh, copper with Damascus. It's like four hundred dollars, five hundred dollars, something like that. Um, but yeah, they're they're you know fairly small knives to be honest. But the biggest thing for me was th the action was horrible. Um, it wasn't. You know, it wasn't chalky or gritty or anything like that, but there was borderline no detent. Um, they're, they're thumb stud knives, and again, I, I play with knives constantly. I generally have no issue actuating the knife. Well, these I did, and I handled, let's see, probably three of them. I handled the copper, I handled the copper in Damascus, and I handled a red and black G10 version. Um, honestly, you know, fit and finish was great on them. So, you know, it's just, just the action that I, I was not impressed by. Um, so I, I may give them another look. Uh, I, I had no other issues with the knife, but that, the action just wasn't great. The next one up is the Southern Grind Quill. That one was, it's something that I've, I've looked at a lot. I really like slim, small, sleek knives. And that one really fits the bill. There's one thing that will prevent me from buying that knife ever. I'll talk about that in a second. Or, but there, there's another thing that kind of kind of turns me off of it just because of the price. So the the knife is fairly small. Again, it's fairly slim, and it's a, it's a newer addition to their line. They're they're like two hundred and seventy dollars, uh, three point two five inch blade. You know, um, it's just super super small knife. Holding it in hand is it's very very slim. The quill is a super fitting name for it. But the the thing that that gets me, as far as the price is concerned, is the steel. It has fourteen C twenty eight N. That is a a lower end steel for sure. It's not, you know, it's not horrible. It's better than yeah. I, I think it's, and I, I could be wrong. I'm not a steel expert by any means. I think it's somewhere around like VG10. Uh, VG10 already pisses me off on a hundred dollar knife, 
an almost three hundred dollar knife, a twelve. Uh, four, I'm sorry, fourteen C twenty eight N. That's just. Ugh. I don't know. If, um, again, I, I don't care a ton about blade steels, but that just irritates the shit out of me for some reason. Uh, apologies for that expletive. But the, the action on the knife was great. You know, ergonomically, it was very interesting. Uh, the blade shapes very unique um just because it's it's a worn cliff but it it tapers down a lot and i mean more cliffs do but if you look at a picture you'll see what i mean it's it's a very unique blade shape on the knife um the the thing that will prevent me from ever buying one though is the lock bar and when i was uh talking to the woman at hellacious blades she mentioned this she explicitly stated you know when you close it watch out for the lock bar that's that's a a big issue I've noticed, and I wasn't sure what she meant. This is a frame lock knife with no um, over travel stop. I went to close it, and that lock bar bent far. I didn't mess it up, you know, or, or I would have, you know, of course bought it. But that lock bar is super soft. It is very, very easy to actuate. And if they had an over travel stop, that would be a, a great, great feature, honestly. Um, but they don't. So that knife feels, in hand, like I'm going to ruin it. So in between the, the lock bar uh, being extremely soft um, and me worrying about breaking it, the, the steel and the price, it's just not something I think I'm going to look at. Um, another thing I tried out was the, the Penguin. I was impressed. Um, again, I don't think so for the price that I'm going to get it. And it's not really my style, but action and everything were great which i find weird so the detent on their flippers the penguin and the quill that i tried were really really good but the detent on their thumb stud knives just was awful uh, in my opinion yeah another thing i tried was a few of the southern grind fixed blades those are fantastic i almost walked out of there with a fixed blade knife which i don't i don't even need to see um although I, I might start now that i'm working from home you know um I might, I might pick up some more fixed blades. Um, let me know if you guys would be interested in that at all. But, yeah. Um, so their fixed blades were really, really, really cool. Um, let me look up which ones I tried out real quick. Because I, I don't want to... Um, I don't want to say one thing and then be incorrect. One that I... That I liked a lot was the Rhino. That one was... It is not my style. I'm going to be honest with you. That thing is absolutely massive. And it's expensive, but to be honest, the, the price is justified. <laughs> so it's it's a huge, huge fixed blade, in my opinion. Uh, it's o Overall, for fixed blades, it's not all that big. It's a you know, four and a quarter inch blade. Overall length is like a little under nine and a half inches. But there's a lot of stuff in this. So one thing is, it's it's okay. First off, it's five hundred dollars. It's G10 and D2. You're probably wondering, you know, what the hell is this in Medford? No, it's not. Um, the price is again justified, honestly, in, in my opinion. So it's five hundred dollars. It comes with a custom Pelican case. Uh, it's watertight, crush proof, dust proof, and it's big. It's not huge, huge. It's, it's the size of like a laptop though, um, like a good 15 to 17 inch laptop. It's it's a pretty big box. Um, and and at, at the end of it, you know, you, you get a pry bar, like the at the pommel, you, you get a pry bar, you get a bottle opener, you get a hex bit. Um, there's, there's more, um, there's like a thumb hole in the blade is what I would normally call it if it were uh, a folder, but it's not. Um, and that's actually a, a multi-wrench thing that can slot in like four different um gosh what are they called uh gosh it's slipping me at the moment but four different sizes of of bolt can be you know undone with it um it, it comes with a uh, a sheath the sheath was okay didn't didn't super impress me but the, the sheath was the sheath was pretty good it wasn't bad for the price um the the handle is very thick the handle is very, very thick. The blade is already a, a quarter of an inch thick, but the the handle is. I'm gonna go and venture a guess and say an, an inch to an inch and a quarter thick. And the reason is, 
sorry, water. Um, <clears throat> the reason is the handle has a flashlight built into it, and I don't mean like a cheap, you know, like a fold-out flashlight. It literally has a flashlight clipped into it that you unclip and take out, and it, it's it's an O-light. I'm not sure the exact model. About 400 lumens, though. But yeah, it just unclips from the handle of the freaking knife. So while this is something that I would have zero use for, it's really cool. And I think if I were in any sort of survival situation, this would probably be the knife that I would go for. Um, there are definitely a few drawbacks. You know, you got that D2. It's a little rust-prone. I haven't had any issues with it, but... You know, if you're out in the wilderness, it's a little rust prone, so I'd keep it in that case. It's it's bulky, it's heavy. The knife alone is like 11 ounces. With the case and everything, it's a, a, about a pound, pound and a half. But it's just, it's a really, 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 really cool fixed blade. I was very impressed with that. I didn't think I would like it all that much. Um, probably my favorite that I handled, though, was the Jackal Pop. So they have the Jackal, which was, uh, again, a really really good fixed blade but the jackal pop really blew me away um there's a, a ton a ton of colors for this thing and it's not that bad it's it's uh 170 you get a steel that i know nothing about uh 8670 m it's a high carbon steel which most fixed blades are um and you get you know mil g10 handles it you know it is what it is um the blade is coated so you don't have to worry about rust that much and you do get a pretty cool sheath with it but just ergonomically it was it was a really really awesome fixed blade i love the blade shape um god i, I want to go back to hellacious blades so bad right now <laughs> luckily again I don't, I don't have the money for it but i was very very impressed with with their uh their fixed blades their folders not so much the penguins the exception but again it's not really my style but their fixed blades were fantastic uh, next up, Spartan Blades. So there were uh, a few different models from Spartan Blades that I tried. And it was kind of middling. Um, the The one knife that I actually wanted to try from them pretty bad was the, the Harsey Folder. Uh, you know, I, I didn't get to. So that was, that was a little... Um, a little disappointing. Um, I did get, get to try the Harsey fixed blade, which was honestly pretty freaking cool still. Um, I got to try the Palace, which is a, a button lock flipper. And I got to try the uh, Kronos, 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 which is a uh, just a, a flipper. Um, so let's go and touch on the Kronos first because it's the one I like the least. <laughs> um, there, it's, it's, it's relatively expensive. It's like uh, f about 550 but you know, you're you're getting a decent blade steel S thirty five VN, you're getting titanium with carbon fiber inlays, and honestly the knife looks really cool. Um one thing that bothered me though is in between the the titanium and the carbon fiber and the the edges on this knife, it just wasn't super comfortable in the hand, and it was a little annoying to close just because there's a bit of carbon fiber stabbing into you when you um push the lock bar back. So that was a little irritating. Um, the Palace, I, I considered buying one of these actually. They're fairly inexpensive, like 300 bucks. Um, I believe it's an aluminum handle with an S35 VN blade. But it's just a, it's a button lock flipper. It, it's pretty interesting, honestly. I just, I wasn't completely sold on it. Um, another thing I really liked, again, was their, their Harsey fixed blade. Super awesome fixed blade. I, I, I'm, just, I'm not into fixed blades that much, or I would have considered it um s35 vn which is weird on a fixed blade you just don't see that a ton and you know uh, black micarta handles which felt great it was just uh, it was a really good fixed blade um i might be in the market for more fixed blades at least that's what it sounds like to me those are the only ones i tried from Spartan blades um next up ratworks so i'm not a huge fan of outside automatics just they're just not my thing um, I, I don't know. There was one that I, I very briefly considered purchasing it. I, however, quickly got rid of that idea. Um, it's the Ratworks MRX Ambi X Factor. That's a lot. I mean, if you want the full name, it's the 
Ratworks, MRX, AMBX, Factory Reverse, Tonto, Automatic Knife, G10. But basically, it's an it's a it's an ambidextrous out the side automatic. What do I mean by ambidextrous? What I mean is there is a release button on both sides, which is already weird. Um, and the clip can be flipped to uh, right or left side uh, for right or left hand carry. It has the custom Ratworks chain, you know, across the the tang of the blade. But what's interesting about this knife is it's it's huge. Try not to curse too much in this. It is enormous. Uh, it's a 4.1 inch blade, and it is a wide blade. Um, it has a wicked recurve. Um, a re it's it's a recurve main grind. It's a compound grind knife, so it's a, it's a it's a recurve main grind and then a recurve tanto edge. But it's not even really a tanto because of the swedge. It's it's almost like. It's like someone took a, uh, a Spartan grind from a, a Microdeck UTX-70 or a Gladius sword, if you've ever seen one of those. They, they sat it down on a table, and they kind of punched in one side of it. So the spine of the blade juts out just a little bit along with the, the swedge of it. And then there's a recurve on, on both grinds of the blade. Really weird. L look this knife up if you haven't. It's a very strange-looking knife. Um, it's just gargantuan. So if I purchased it, it would have been for the ridiculous factor, but it's like five hundred dollars, so I didn't. But that was that was a very interesting knife. Um, next up is Medford. So I tried several of their knives, and there was something that surprised me consistently. It was the way the knives felt in hand, the quality, um, the fit and finish was not perfect. Uh, as mentioned earlier, I have a dress marauder. The stop pin is not even, and I'm I'm gonna ding them for that. That's that's ridiculous. And a a knife that I didn't pay this much for it, but a five hundred and fifty dollar knife. That's that's insane to me, that you can even let that out the door. But you know, but in hand they felt good. Uh, not necessarily ergonomically, although most of them did. They felt really, really good. The quality was there. The build was there. You could tell they were finished by hand. They were just, there was something to them that really, really appealed to me. And I will never purchase their traditional Medford-style knives that they that they used to do a lot more of. Um, they've, they've been swinging a bit more my style. But the, the Praetorian and the uh, original Marauder, I have no interest in them. They're just... I can deal with thick blade stock, you know, up to, you know, a, a fifth of an inch. I, I'll, I'll carry it. I'm not using a quarter inch or a half an inch thick blade. Um, I, I've owned the PMP Beast, and it cut horribly. It was just absolute trash. You basically had to hack through stuff with that, which it did very well. But the, the main grind on it, the hollow grind, cut okay, but the... The compound drop pointy tonto thing at the tip was just horrible, but I, I won't be buying anything that ridiculous. But I tried out a few um, that I'll touch on. Uh, the on belay, the style really isn't for me, but pretty impressive knife, honestly. Um, briefly considered picking it up, it just wasn't really my thing. The infraction, I love. The Medford infraction styling. I will be picking one up at some point in the future. I have no idea when. Whenever I can afford it, probably. Um, however, the one they had there, and this is the reason I didn't buy it, was the carbon fiber version. Medford has the worst feeling carbon fiber I've ever held in my entire life. So it's milled. Um, but the high parts of it, the, the, the flats, I guess, on it, are like a shiny, glossy, stickery feeling carbon fiber. It's not a sticker though, it's solid carbon fiber. And the milled parts were with that beautiful matte carbon fiber look. Um, and it just, it wasn't doing it for me. <laughs> the carbon fiber was just trash, it didn't feel good, it it, it wasn't rounded well. And of course the, the, the titanium on the other side was, and so there's really cool milling lines. Um, the action was pretty good on it. Consistently, the action on these Medfords was, was pretty good, but um, yeah, it just it wasn't 
wasn't for me. If you're looking for a carbon fiber fiber and fraction, which I've heard are a little bit hard to come by, there is one at Hellacious Blades in York, South Carolina. They also have an online shop where they do most of their business, so you can definitely check them out there as well. Um, so yeah, the infraction is something that definitely appealed to me, but it just wasn't, just was not what I was looking for. Um, next up was, gosh, I'm trying to remember the name of it, the Medford Heiress. This is one I almost bought. I almost walked out of there with this knife. It was, it was a really, really cool little, and when I say little, I do mean little, a really, really cool little knife. Um, looking at their site now, it looks like they might have sold it, but it was like a two inch blade with a ton of belly and it was, it was a stubby little knife. If you watch Frankie and Bird's channel, it was a chode knife, uh, for sure. No, it, no, it, it is here. I see it now. It was, it was, it was, it caught me off guard. Um, the one thing I noticed about, noticed about these Medfords and this, the reason I didn't buy this one, just the price is really high on Medford knives. They're they're, they're just high, you know. Um, the knives themselves are very impressive. I, I really, really like their quality. You know, they knocked it out of the park with, with some of those, some of those designs. And again, the the fit and finish. It's it's not rock solid, but it's pretty good. They they feel nice in hand. You can tell there's attention and detail paid to them. Um, and this is like a it's a big little knife. You know, it was really cool. I almost walked out of there with it, but it's four hundred and seventy-five dollars. Eh, that one just did not do it for me. I, you know, I passed on that. But the Aris is really, really cool. Um, I believe there is one more that I tried. Let's see if I can find it here. The Swift. That's what it was. It was not the Suicide Swift, so it had the the lock button, but the the swift i'm gonna try to be kind when i talk about this knife because it was not bad um this may sound bad the action was lethargic it it opened there was no question about whether or not it was going to open but it's very slow and i'm, I'm going to call i'm going to call bs on medford's claim that it was jumping out of people's hands that's that's horseshit. Um, that rat works with that gargantuan 4.1 inch blade, thick, heavy blade. Didn't jump out of my hand, and I, I don't use outside automatics all that much. That's horseshit. This knife opens slowly and lazily, but it does open. Um, it's probably the most practical out the side automatic I've ever seen in my entire life. Which is very weird to say about a Medford practicality, but it is. Um, you know, not in terms of blade stock or anything, but in terms of the action, it opens. You know, it's going to open. It's pretty quick, but it just doesn't have that that snappiness that some people look for. Which, again, I don't really care about outside automatics. So snappiness may be something that's lost on me. But I, I liked it. I mean, it, it will not be anything that I am purchasing. It's just not my style. And again, I really don't care about outside automatics. It's also $525, which is a little high. Again, like other Medford prices. But it was it was pretty good. You know? But I can definitely see when people were talking about the action. And Greg addressed that in some of his Blade Show videos that you can check out. So that was my opinion on Medford. It actually ended up I found a, a Medford dresser Marauder afterwards for a really good price. I have no regrets. That knife is, oh, I love it to death. The it has the little stubby clip, not the the long new one, and th that's my favorite clip of any knife I've ever used in my entire life. And I just I can't get over it. It's amazing. Um, what's next? Heretic. Okay, <clears throat> so Heretic knives was something that I had shown no interest in up to this point. Um, well, let, let me correct that. It's something that I had shown almost no interest in up to this point. You know, I looked at them, some of their designs are 
very, very intriguing. But they just weren't really in my wheelhouse. I, I'm not sure how to describe it. The, the price just seemed a little high. And I, I'm going to sit here and argue that, you know, it still is. But this is what I ended up buying, actually. Um, I bought the Heretic Cleric. They have, they did like a, I think it was the 2018 Blade Show. They did a special edition run of, of these um, out the front automatic Heretic Clerics with a carbon fiber back and a custom splashed front made of aluminum. They're gorgeous. I picked up the the purple, which is like a nice lavender purple. It's a it's a light gray handle with a lavender purple splash and dark gray splash to accompany it. Uh, Tonto hollow ground blade. The blade is gorgeous. It's probably one of my favorite blades I've ever seen in my entire life. It is absolutely fantastic. Uh, the steel isn't super great, especially for the price. These are four hundred dollars. Um, the blade steel is 154 cm, which is <laughs> it's kind of the best of a bad situation. It's probably uh, the best non-powdered steel I've ever used, but it's just not super great. And um, it does seem to be heat treated fairly well, though. Um, I haven't had any issues with it, and the action is so smooth on this thing. Oh my god. Um, it's, it's really, really nice. Uh, I recently also tried a Benchmade Infidel. Doesn't even come close to this knife. It's uh, And that was pretty smooth, honestly. This thing was really, really good. Um, it's a, a front button, or front thumb slide. Uh, the ergonomics are, are perfect on. I love it to death. The clip is a little tight, but other than that, it's, it's great. And the sound isn't super great when I close it. It's a little, little tinny, but... It's uh, it impressed me a lot. So that's what I ended up walking away with. Um, I didn't actually intend to buy anything initially, but that that just swayed me. I saw them. And I'd been looking at them online. I hadn't pulled the trigger. Thought it was high. I was like, here's your chance to try it. So yeah. And there's one more knife I wanted to talk about. Um, I did not handle this one because I knew for sure I could not afford it, so I didn't touch it. Um, it was a a custom. Uh, Big Knives Astio with Teal Micarta. Oh my god. Oh my god. If I could have walked away with one thing in that shop, it would have been this. And it was not the most expensive thing there. It was just, it was gorgeous. So, um, it's a CTS XHP blade, uh, mostly satin finished, but it's, it's a compound grind with a sort of upswept Tonto tip and recurve that tonto part of it which is flat ground instead of hollow ground is uh, mirror polish it's really unique um, the frame is like a satin titanium and then the clip and uh, the milling on the inside the lock bar are jeweled so it's kind of that uh, what do you call it oh gosh perlage finish um, and it's it's great uh, ceramic ball bearing system um and the, the back spacer was was jeweled as well it was just it was, it was beautiful oh my god it was beautiful and the reason i did not walk out of there with that knife because i've never seen a more beautiful handle material on a knife than teal micarta i'm gonna be honest with you the only reason i did not walk out of there with that knife is that it was sixteen hundred dollars and I don't have that kind of money, but good lord, I wish I did. Oh, oh my gosh, I, I wish I did so, so bad. It was absolutely gorgeous. Um, if you are a very rich person and you want to make me the happiest, happiest, happiest YouTuber in the world, purchase this knife and send it to me because holy flying crap. I need it. I need it so bad. If if I knew I could get the funds together, I, I, I would buy it in a heartbeat. But it's just, it's just up there in price, for sure. And again, it's it's a custom, you know, and I, I can appreciate that. But 
uh, I don't have the kind of money. But yeah, that was uh, my, my general impression of the knives. Again, the shop was absolutely perfect. They were very welcoming, very knowledgeable, which is, a, you know, it's weird to say. Uh, I've been to Going Gear. I've been to a few other knife shops. And it's not that they don't know things, but the people at Hellacious Blades knew everything about these knives. You know, and... But for example, the quill, before I even picked it up, she's like, watch out for the lock bar. She knew what she was talking about. It was, it was great. Um, they were able to make recommendations to me and things like that. Again, they're very accommodating, very, very kind people. If, if you're in the area, stop at the shop. If not, check out their online store. They have a ton of stuff. Again, it's mostly higher-end production and customs. Um, they do, however, sell... You know, they sell Kershaw, the Minch Maids, and stuff like that too, but it's 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 mostly higher-end production stuff. So definitely, definitely check them out. Um, if you've seen the Sabenza Tour on Instagram, they're the ones hosting that. I actually got a picture of that. You can go check my Instagram out for that one. I got a picture with the Sabenza because it, it was in the shop um, before it got sent back out because it had just returned for Blade Show. It was, it's, it was really, really cool. Um, so those are my impressions on... There's knives that I tried out, and that's kind of my overall thought on um, the the shop as well. Really, really great shop. You know, high quality knives, higher quality shop. It was it was it was awesome. Last thing I want to touch on was uh, as far as knives go is the blade show. This is going to be a really long episode. How long? It's already an hour and a half, and I still have stuff to talk about. Jeez, I'm gonna try to not speed it up a ton, but I'm I'm gonna try to mm, make it a little bit quicker. Um, last thing was Blade Show. There were a few, uh, a few things that I, I really, really was interested in, and, and Blade Show is always a, an interesting time for sure, because there's a lot of new releases. I wish there was something like that for fountain pens, but there, there really isn't. But there were a, a lot of new releases um, around Blade Show, and some, some of this is going to be pre, pre Blade Show, some of it's going to be after. Um, so the first thing that caught my eye was the Riot Jack 2. Very interesting knife. I don't think I'm going to pick it up just because of the price. Uh, but it's an integral with a detachable blade, which is absolutely insane. I think it would be about $500 or so, a little bit over. Um, so yeah, it's just a little out of my price range. Uh, the next thing up is the Pinion Knives uh, like traditional front flipper. So it, it looks like a slip joint. It's a front flipper and it has a clip. Uh, they they had they he's had customs of these for a while. They've just been a little bit high, not as far as customs go, like six or seven hundred dollars, but a little bit high for me. Um, this is a collaboration with Riot, and they come out for about three hundred dollars. Um, I will be picking one of those up for sure because they have the Micarta versions available. And good lord, I'm excited about that. Um, so yeah, they they have Micarta uh, titanium. And carbon fiber versions of those. Looking forward to that quite a bit. Um, Holt Blade Works. Oh my gosh. Okay. I'm going to go on a bit of a rant here. Talked about scalping. I frequent read it quite a bit. <laughs> Excuse me. And on Knife Swap. <sighs> Let me back up a little bit. So Holt Blade Works sold, as far as I know, all of their Spectres on the first day. Really wish they'd spread that out a little bit. But they sold all of their Spectres, like 100 plus, on the first day. And they were, you know, base price, I think, 750 There was some jackass flipping his Spectre, a, a base model Spectre, again, 750 He had a link to the fucking website, pricing and everything. Just a real ass. Um... And he got $1,200 for it. He just made money at the show. Like, how... How much of a douche do you have to be to do something like that? You know, again, if you purchase it, you don't like it, you want to sell it down the road, if you can get $1,100, $1,200 for it, sure, do it. But flipping it, buying it for the express freaking purpose of flipping it just really pisses me off. Anyway, back to what I was talking about, though. Um, Holt Blade Works is coming out with a new knife that is much more intriguing to me than the Spectre. It's called the Haptic. A little bit smaller. 
Should be coming up soon. Probably can't afford one, but I'm looking forward to seeing it. Um, next thing up, the the right hummingbird, which I have a review of, and disassembly, which is insane on my channel. Um, they're coming out with a, a larger version. I like to call it the humming big. Um, there's no name for it yet, but it's this really cool modeled, uh, marbled, red and black carbon fiber. They definitely check that out. That's a it's a really really cool knife that's coming up. Um, there were a few more. The Whippersnapper by Lemic looks really, really, really cool as well. Um, there was a Fox knife that is a very strange opening mechanism. It's basically a button near the pivot that you press down and then you rotate it to get the knife out or to close the knife. It's It was crazy. Um, so I'm looking forward to those coming out as well. And there's also, um, this is a little bit after Blade Show, but Brian Nadeau, which is Sharp by Design, or Knife Nuts podcast, if you listen to any of that, he has uh, another knife coming out, and I just missed the Evo Typhoon, I just didn't have the money at the time, just, I, I didn't, didn't think I could afford it, it was around Christmas time, I didn't get it. Uh, this next one, though, is looking really good. So it's, it's a, you know, drop point blade with a swedge. It has a thumb hole and is basically a, a bit large hole in the blade. Um, I love spidey. <clears throat> Excuse me. Let me get a sip of water. I drink so much water during this because I'm talking for such a long period of time. But it has a. I love spidey flicking a, a knife open. So it has a hole for that. It looks great. You could probably do it with your thumb too. And it has a flipper and Brian's custom detent, which I really want to try. A 3.25 inch blade. So it's right in my size range. Um. And he was just kind of asking for recommendations on materials. He got like 150 comments, and an absolute ton of them mentioned Micarta, including me. And I want a Micarta Sharp by Design knife with a freaking spidey hole in it. It's not a spidey hole, it's a huge long hole, but I, I want a spidey flick of Brian Nadeau knife so bad. When those come out, if they are affordable, I will be buying the absolute crap out of one, and I want it so bad. Um, <laughs> that's about it on the, the knife front. There Again, there wasn't a ton of stuff, but some of it interested me quite a bit. Next up, uh, watches. There's you know, a couple of things I want to touch on here, not much. So... When I was originally considering going to Europe, I was considering picking up a watch over there. I don't think I'm going to because I, I found the watch that I want. It's just out of my price range. Um, it's it's an Oris. I forget the exact name of it at the moment because I've been trying to put it on my mind. But it's it's immaculate. Oh, my God. It's part of their Save the Ocean series. It's like $2,600. I'm not going to buy it. So let's talk about a watch I may actually purchase at some point. We'll see. Um, so Autodromo. I have had no interest in their watches before, but they've put out two recently uh, of the Group B series that I've liked a lot. Uh, the first one is a Corsica Blue, so it's like a, a satin polished kind of a case and, and strap with a very vibrant blue dial and these kind of like peach colored indices and hands and oh my gosh, I, I want it so bad, I want it so, so bad. Um, but they're, they're a little expensive. I think they're around eight or nine hundred dollars. But wow, they are. Oh gosh, they're they're great. Um, there is one more from them that I also like. I'm kind of torn on. This is the Worn and Wound Special Edition. It's a, it's a, a very very matte gray. With a. A polished um, oh my gosh, bezel. Oh, I forgot the name of it for a minute. Um, so matte gray dial, matte gray outside to match the dial, and light blue indices, and you get a matte bla a matte gray uh, strap as well. So ugh, it, I may be picking up one of those if I can scrounge up some funds, but we'll see. Um, so that's about it on the uh, the watch front. So if you do not care about my personal life or what I do in my free time, you can go ahead and stop the listening experience here at you know roughly an hour and a half and move on with your day. If you do care, there's going to be another uh, maybe five minutes of talk here. Um, so first up, uh, video games I've been playing. Um, the I I always play Overwatch. Oh my god, 
play the crap out of Overwatch. It's probably the, the best value for money that I've gotten out of a video game. Um, just because I've put so much time into it. But it's really, really fun. Really, really enjoying that. Um, I really don't care about the new Hero Baptiste at all. Um, just, I just, I just don't. But I've been playing it a lot. And the rest of my time has been going to a new game that I've been looking forward to forever. So my second favorite game of all time is Castlevania Symphony of the Night. I've bought it like four or five times on different consoles. And it's just, it's a really, really fun game. It's, it's a great, you know, Metroidvania action RPG style game. It's, it's just really, really fun. Um, story is just completely inconsequential to the experience. But the game is great. Um, recently there was a spiritual successor um, by Ko oh gosh I think it's Koji Igarashi he uh, is done a Kickstarter like five years ago at this point for a game called Bloodstained Ritual of the Night and it came out and unfortunately I bought the Switch port of the game the game is fantastic if you're looking for a successor to Symphony of the Night pick it up. Do not pick it up on Switch. Um, the port is just bad. There's a lot of frame drops and things like that. It's it's just, it's not great. Um, but the game itself is really, really fun. Uh, last two things. Um, I am working from home now, which is a very weird experience, but it will allow me to carry out a bit more of a variety of things without having to worry about breaking any security policies or anything like that. So, um, again, may, may pick up some more fixed blades or larger knives soon just just depends really and last thing is uh again i'll be going to europe in october there will be like a vlog style thing if there's anything that you guys want me to film in particular over there please let me know um i've considered filming my experience inside of pen world um, we're also going to ackerman so you know if you have any interest in that just let me know um i'd really appreciate some feedback on that and if, again if there's anything you guys want to see i'm not going to change my trip for you but if there's anything that we're passing by, um, we're going to Germany, France, uh, the Netherlands, and Denmark. So, is that right? Is it, is it Denmark? Oh, my God. Hold on one second. We might not be going to Denmark. Um, Belgium, not Denmark. I apologize. <laughs> so, Germany, France, the Netherlands... And Belgium. So if there's anything along our route that you know you recommend we check out or anything like that, let me know. Um, I'll be definitely coming back with some pens and ink for sure, um, and maybe a watch too. I don't know. No one knows. We're not there yet. But um, thanks for listening. If you've gotten this far into the super super long auditory thing, I have no idea what to call this. If you have any suggestions, let me know. But yeah, uh, thanks for listening. I hope you all have a wonderful day, and uh, talk to you later. Bye.